I will have to admit up front, uh, I had to lean on Don and Connie more. Uh, they've had quite a bit of my glass now for a number of years, and I had to ask them to return it finally. I know it left, it left holes on their wall, but I mean, what can you do? You know? Anyway, Don was gracious enough to help me out. He had some pieces that I probably will never see again. Uh, so I asked him if he would mind bringing some of them so that we could at least share the, the colors and shapes. First of all, everybody hear me back there? Yeah. First of all, we'll cover the Peacock and Hearn uh, Northwood pieces. We do not have a representation of all of the colors available. Uh, unfortunately, I don't own a, uh, a green one. I didn't uh, uh, ask Don to bring one. He brought just a few pieces uh, that I don't have. In fact, there's many pieces I don't have, but he brought a few that, that uh, I thought were kind of exciting. And to call your attention to one of them, this is probably one of the prettiest Peacock and Urn Master Ice Cream Bowls that I've seen. And this is a smoky. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, not very many of these were made. This is a real rarity. And if you will note, I can get the glass on it or the light on it just right. Hopefully you can see the smoke. Yeah. This is a piece that I ran and raved about ever since I saw it at Don and Connie's. Unfortunately, uh, he's not parted with it, so apparently uh, I'm gonna have a long time to rant and rave about it. This is a beautiful peacock and iron bowl. Existence, is That's there? About it. So therefore you're looking at a piece of glass that uh, not too many of us are going to get to own. <clears throat> so therefore, you're not going to see one up here. Uh, that is also at the very top of the list. There's probably maybe a dozen or less of those known. Even fewer of the small master ice creams, the individual master ice creams, very few of them known. And uh, not too long ago, one of our members, John Muehlbauer, <coughs> sold one for a hunk of money. Uh, I don't know what one would bring at an auction, but I would imagine pretty darn close to around $10,000. <clears> That's why you don't see one up here. <laughs> <clears throat> this piece, which is also another beauty, is a sapphire blue stippled piece. Very rare. This is the first one and the only one I've seen. There's others in existence, but I've not not seen them or had a chance of owning one. Uh, this is also Don Morris. As you can see, the coloration on it is considerably different than any of the blues that you will see on, on just a blue or, or an ice blue. It's kind of a, the best thing I can, well, I can't even describe it. It's just a, a beautiful piece of glass. <laughs> That's when you turn 39. Yes, again. <clears throat> At any rate, as we go from there, we would have to include the green master ice cream, which I do not have up here. Uh, that is also a very tough one to come across. I heard of an emerald green one not too long ago that went for $7,500. Uh, if you could find one, I would imagine that's about where you're going to have to have to be with your pocketbook. Uh, from there, we would go down to what I call the more common colors. I believe also, I should add, uh, I believe I have heard of an aqua master ice cream. I don't know where I heard of it. I can't say that there's one that exists because I've not seen it. Have you, do you know anything about those, Don? The only one I've heard of was in the last issue of the Heart of America for sale pieces where there was an aqua one in there advertised. Now, it didn't say whether it was the master or the small size, mm. but it uh, had a number of chips it said it was being offered to $500. So that is the only one I've heard of. Okay, yes, those are also extremely, extremely difficult to come by. Uh, from there, we can go down to the ice green, ice blue, white, 
which I'm sure we have all seen uh, from time to time and realizing it or not, uh, those are getting to be very tough to come by. You see them every once in a while. The price is creeping up. Uh, not more than probably three years ago, uh, you probably could have bought an ice green for around $500, $450, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, now you're likely to spend $950 to $1,100, depending upon the piece. Uh, ice blues are going up. Uh, there again, the last uh, three, four years, they have been going up steadily, and you're going to end up in the neighborhood of around nine to a thousand dollars on one of those, depending on how flat it is and how uh, how the color is on it. So, therefore, what we think of as being a relatively common piece, uh, when it gets to master ice creams, there really isn't a real common piece. You will come across the uh, pastel marigolds probably a little bit more than you will any of the other colors. A true marigold uh, piece, very difficult to find. They're not listed as rare, but they are either all in people's collections or something's happened to them because they're not around. Uh, when you go to the blues, there again, it's a fairly difficult piece to find. We looked for quite some time before we found any kind of blue one to find. Luckily enough to tell you a little bit of in one of the ads in the uh, antique trader, we were looking one day and somebody back in the south, I believe it was, somebody we've never heard of before, uh, had a master blue ice cream for sale. Rather decent price considering what they're bringing. So we called the lady and she said, oh yeah, it's a real nice one, you'll really like it. And I said, okay, I'll send you a check. Well, as uh, pleasantly surprised as we were, it turned out to be a stippled blue. Your stippled pieces are, with the exception of the uh, pastel marigolds, are very tough to come by. They're probably uh, about 10 to 1, maybe even more than that, if you were to find a regular blue opposed to a stippled blue. Now, there you do come stippled in almost every color that I'm aware of, but they're just not around. They're very difficult to find. So as a result, this piece, even though it's not what I would call a super piece, we kept it because of the fact that it is stippled and very difficult to come across. Mm -hmm. A common of the two, now some of these I have seen, this is not the best one I've ever come across. Uh, but a few of them I have seen electric blue in this, which are just super pieces. This one's not electric by any means, but it does have a lot of iridescence on it. So we decided to house that in our home for a while. One of the things that you look for on this particular piece, as far as the master ice creams are concerned, the flatter you can get, the better. People just seem to like the more flatter pieces than the more turned up pieces. And a good uh, instance of this, if you look at the ice cream piece, it seems to be smaller in diameter than the ice blue or the uh, smoky or a number of the others up here because it is turned up quite a lot. The ice blue is very flat and turned right up at the edges. And that brings up a good point if somebody ever comes to you and says, I have a peacock and urn chalk plate that I would like to sell. This one is about average, and it's about two and a half inches, maybe three inches up off the table if you were to measure from here to here. Now that's not acceptable when you're talking about plates in general. But on this particular piece, it is acceptable because none of them are flat. They're all going to run between two and a half, three inches. But the key to this is, if you find a, a piece that looks like it could be a chalk plate, but it is turned up even slightly on the edges, it then becomes a bowl. It is no longer a chalk plate. So the key to these is to look at the finish on the edge. If it is flat, straight out from the center, 
you have a chalk plate. If it is turned up at all, you have a flat bowl, and there's a big difference in price. All of the chalk plates are very, very scarce, regardless of what color. However, the marigold uh, is scarcer than the purple. And I understand uh, just about two months ago, a marigold uh, went off at one of the woody auctions, uh, supposedly a super nice piece, and surprisingly enough, it brought $1,600, which in my estimation is very cheap. So therefore, you never know. There still are some bargains out there if, you're, if your pocketbook can stand the bargains and if you're willing to look for them. One of the other things I wanted to bring to your attention too, a lot of us uh, seem to forget about it, but uh, in Peacock and Ern Northwood, there are basically five shapes. Uh, we have the master ice creams, we have the small individual ice creams, which by the way, are not real prevalent. You find them very, very seldom, and especially at a price you can, you know, contend with. But we also have a six inch plate, which I do not have one here, which is a, comes from the same mold as this. We also have a large ruffled peacock and urn bowl. They're very scarce. I've seen a couple of them. The two I've seen were not super pieces, but I'm sure there are some super ones out there. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are all pieces that we need to be on the lookout for. So like I say, I believe personally, uh, just in our search for them, that the master ice creams are not that plentiful and neither are the small individuals and the small plates are almost impossible. Uh, the large ruffled bowls you see very, very, very seldom and the chalk plate you're gonna find very, very, very seldom. So therefore, I think all of us need to kind of gear into that. If you can find a piece that you can afford, uh, it's not a bad investment because they just seem to keep climbing. At any rate, I wanted to <clears throat> bring one thing up. For those of you who are newer collectors, and I've heard this several times before, that there are no good pieces left. They're all in people's collections. They can't get a good buy. They want too much money for them. I want you all to look at this piece. Now this was the first piece that we ever found. And as you'll know, the peacock is upside down. And what happened was Don and Connie brought this to a meeting several years ago. And we happened to see it and thought, wow, you know, master ice cream. And Carol went running over there and, and uh, tried to negotiate for it. And Don got us to one side and he said, well, you know, Bob, he said, this is a, a very expensive bowl because the peacock's upside down. I've never seen another one. And he said, there were six, seven times more than a regular one. So anyway, I sat there and thought, you know, who does he think he's getting? So anyway, I offered him four times the amount and he took it. And I just got to steal <laughs> off. <clears throat> <laughs> but at any rate, Don has... Uh, a lot to do with our, our love for the peacock bowls. Uh, uh, like I say, the very first piece we bought from him, uh, and he has uh, an IOU from me for several of the <laughs> peacocks bowls up here also. And uh, he's been a lot of help to me in my trying to collect these two particular patterns. Before we leave uh, the shop plate, uh, I might mention in addition to the miracles, one of the kind, was bought recently. Larry Young, who bought that, uh, Ohio, also has the only known white. Uh -huh. Yes. And there also is one ice cream that the <coughs> calls. Mm -hmm. Those are the only three in any color other than purple. Right. Yes, I was going to bring that up, and since I decided to do this without notes, I forgot about it. It just mm -hmm. goes to show you. Uh, there, there is an ice cream. Uh, which there's one known, very, very rare, uh, never seen it, just heard tell about it. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about on the chop plates, uh, I would think probably there might be 50 to 75 purple chop plates around. 
which isn't a whole lot. And as far as Marigold is concerned, uh, I don't think there's probably more than about four or five. I've tried to soak and flatten out some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me, John. Just one. There's only one known marigold. Boy, that is really depressing. And that baby well, went for sixteen. Yeah. Helen James sold one too uh, a couple, three years ago. That that was pretty much the same shape as Larry Young's. It has a slight, it had a slight curl on the end, mm -hmm. but it's and it's not as flat as yours. But it was sold as a chocolate wall. Oh, I didn't yeah, yeah. And it, in my opinion, it was a chocolate wall. Both of them are chocolate. So I know those two. Okay, so we know two anyway, but when you're talking two opposed to a whole lot of people collecting them, uh, They're both that's beautiful. real scarce. The color on both of them was fantastic. Just gorgeous. But at any rate, like I say, uh, a lot of people, when they look at this pattern, they look at the master ice creams and figure, hey, that's it, big deal, you know, and walk away. But there are, like I say, four other shapes uh, that we all should be looking for and some of which are very, very rare, and if not rare, very, very scary. <coughs> uh, does anybody have anything more to add before we go on to the peacocks? Okay. Uh, from there, we get down to the uh, peacocks, or Harry's bird, or whatever you want to call this. Around my house, uh, the family has got to refer to these as peacocks and Bob, because I have not been able to pass one up for all quite some time now. Here again, we get into a massive amount of colors. Uh, and there are uh, quite a few of them up here that we, I do not have to show you, uh, some of which are very, very rare. Uh, we brought what we were able to, however, and hopefully you can kind of just dream about the other ones. Uh, first of all, uh, there's not very many ruffled bowls up here, as you can see. Uh, mainly my interest goes towards the pie crust edge. Not that there's anything wrong with the ruffled bowls. In fact, I have one here that uh, will knock your socks off. And this one, of course, also belongs to Don Moore. And this is a smoky eight ruffle. Yeah, now, these smoky. are awful, awful tough to come by. I don't know how many of them there are, but they're not very many. Three to my knowledge. Okay, three to Don's knowledge. So that gets it right down there to the nitty gritty. There's not a whole lot of them around. This one I think is a super piece. Don also brought to my attention right before the uh, meeting started that the Northwood Smoky uh, pieces, whether it be Peacock or, or whatever other patterns come in Smoky, is a true Smoky. It's in the base glass. Imperial, who was known for their Smoky, uh, the Smoky comes from the iridescence that is put on the glass, but not the base glass. So therefore, <clears throat> this makes this even a more desirable piece. Even, even the fact that there's only three now. <laughs> but the iridescence on this is just very, very, very pretty. I hope you can all see that. But at any rate, like I say, I, I do not have a lot of eight ruffled bowls here. I uh, brought the pie, pie crust edge configuration. And really, we only have three shapes in this pattern, which is the eight ruffled, the pie crust edge, and of course, plates. <clears throat> there are certain colors that either in plates are very rare, but in bowls are not that exciting, or maybe just the opposite. One of the great mysteries to me is why the eight ruffled bowls and the pie crust edge bowls and ice green are extremely tough to come by, but yet there are tons of ice green plates around. Normally plates and most every other pattern to the more desirable pieces, but in this instance, it kind of changes on. <coughs> the ice blue, uh, not only is that tough to come by in the bowls, but it's also a very tough plate to come by. Money-wise, they're up there at a good two grand, depending upon the piece. Uh, the pie crust edge bowl, I would imagine if they went off for auction today or tomorrow, and it was a good example, 
uh, would not surprise me to be in the $3,200, $3,500 area. I have not heard of one sell in the past four or five or six months, but I'm quite sure that they're up there up there pretty well. Have you heard of one? I, one, I know I've sold some three, four years ago, about 3000 Is that right? Then I'm probably Tom pretty Burton. low. That's what they thought. Yeah, I'm probably so, low then. If it was that long ago <laughs> that it brought three, I'm sure we're going to be looking at over four. Both of these pie crust edge pieces, and either ice blue or ice green, uh, have all been dried up. I don't know how many of them there are, but uh, they're not around. In fact, even uh, back in 1983, I was reading some literature that I borrowed from Don for this uh, talk, and uh, in 1983, the gentleman who wrote this article uh, said you're going to have to spend a whole lot of time and a lot of money find either an ice blue or an ice green pipe crust edge and roughly for that matter uh, not very common at all at any rate the rarities in the uh, uh, peacocks pieces I would think probably <coughs> would start with one of these little beauties which is the aqua oval pipe crust edge there is probably there is probably less than ten of these known. I personally have run down, I think, six, and I don't know if there's more than that or not. I would have to think maybe there are a few more, but I know there's less than a dozen of these in existence. And this is another mystery as to why uh, there are so few high crust edge aqua opals, but yet. There seems to be plenty of the eight ruffled aqua opal. They're not cheap by any means, and you don't run across them every day, but there are a whole lot more eight ruffled than there are high crust edge. <clears throat> One of the reasons somebody brought to my attention uh, that could possibly come into play here, <clears throat> uh, the stress on the glass when the aqua opalescence was refired. Uh, broke a great deal of it. You can see stress points around the pie crust edge on almost all of these, I understand, and they look like a very, very small spider web. And for some reason, I don't know if it's probably to the shape, they had to crimp these fairly close, or what the reason basically is, and probably we will never know, but that makes quite a bit of sense to me, that if if the stress points down here were ruining a lot of glass, they probably decided, hey, we're not going to make any more of this. We'll just make a bunch of eight roll, which were easy. So depending upon, you know, who you want to believe, this is one point that was brought up to me, and it may be true, maybe not. I don't know. The only thing I can tell you is there's not very many of these around. Blue, ice, green, aqua. Uh, I just recently found out about an aqua pie crust edge. Haven't seen it. I understand it's very pretty. Uh, very few aquas are around also in high crust edge and they're not real prevalent as far as eight ruffle go either. But then we get down to the green. Now, to be honest to me, I find that there are a number of different colors of green. So therefore I thought I was going to pay the pop and get one green one and be happy the rest of my life. Well that ain't the way it works. Uh, as soon as I pick this one up, which I bought at, uh, at our convention last year, this happens to be uh, a little scarcer than the others. The back patterns on all your peacocks are either plain, rib, or basket weave. The basket weave is much scarcer than any of the other two. This one happens to be a basket weave. Now the reason uh, a lot of these, I feel, uh, are somewhat scarcer than either the, the uh, rib or the plain is that when, especially when you get to your pastel colors, if they put a basket weave on the back of that, you're going to have a real modern looking piece. I mean, you're going to look right through the, the uh, peacocks and see a basket weave. So therefore, I can understand why they didn't put them on, let's say, a white or an ice blue or an ice green or, or whatever. But uh, plates, even dark plates, this type of thing, you very, very seldom come up with a basket weave. Now, some people, this is not a big deal, they could care less. Other people, uh, it is a big deal. It just all depends how in-depth you want to get with peacocks. One of the other toughies, 
when you get to this pattern, is the white. Now I've seen probably, I don't know, 10 to 8 roughened white bowls, not real common. But between this one, and I know Don Moore owns a white one, uh, I don't know of anybody else that has a white one. I'm sure there are a few around, but this is also a very tough one to come by. So whenever you get to your pastels in this pattern uh, and pie crust edge, you're looking at some feet to be able to dig one out of the woodwork. I mentioned to you that in the greens, there are many different shading of greens. This piece I bought from Don at the Oregon Convention this past year it is very pastelish looking. It's a super pretty bowl. It has a lot of blues, a lot of you know uh, pinks, this type of thing in it. It is a green, just like the green one that we showed uh, earlier, but it is a, uh, a lighter green base glass. And with this pastelish iridescence, they look totally different when you have them hanging on the wall side to side. So therefore, uh, like I say, if you start getting into various uh, colors of green, this type of thing, that's a whole new ball game because you're going to start as an emerald green. Uh, the base glass is very dark on it. It is damaged, but I went ahead and bought it because the appearance of the bowl was just super. When it's on the wall, I forget that it is damaged. And I would imagine there's probably two or three or four or five different, uh, different colors of green also that aren't showing up here. So there's, uh, like I say, depending upon how involved you want to get with peacocks, there's always something that you don't have. It's like a pastel marigold, but it's not. If we look at the base glass on it, it is, looks smoky. And from what I understand, Don bought this as a smoking piece. However, he feels it's not a smoke. So this one is a mystery. I don't know what color you want to call it. It's up to everybody to uh, come up with their own. You can call it red if you want, I guess. <laughs> a very striking piece, very pretty piece, but very odd base glass. <coughs> and the plates. And I only brought one plate because of the room problem. This one happens to be a blue stippled plate. These are not real difficult to come by. They're a little tougher than a regular stippled plate. Uh, most all of the colors in plates, you will find stippled. By that I mean uh, they made stippled plates, stippled bowls, along with non-stippled plates, non-stippled bowls. Uh, as a general rule, your stippled pieces are going to be more expensive, just like the uh, master ice creams. Much tougher to come by. Uh, in the aqua opal, uh, apparently there is one stippled pie crust edge mill. And the gentleman who owns it will never part with it, from what I'm told. So the only way you're going to see that is if you have to be at a convention or a show or whatever that he happens to be at. He's uh, back in Wisconsin, I believe. So therefore, uh, a lot of the pieces that you see up here, uh, very, very tough to come by and stippled. I have not seen personally, although I'm sure there are some in existence, I've not seen an ice green or an ice blue stippled by crust edge. In fact, I can't remember ever seeing an eight roughly stippled in ice blue or ice green but they must be around. One of the things too, in this particular pattern, just like the master ice creams, as you probably noticed in the uh, auction prices that you've seen, uh, peacocks are, are quite hot. The prices on especially the rarer, scarcer pieces are going up astronomically. Therefore, if you do get a chance to buy a piece that you like and it's anywhere within reason that you can afford, uh, jump on it because I don't think they're going to get any cheaper. The one good thing that I see over the past uh, two, three years, the peacocks have really taken off. Uh, I think more people are conscious of the pattern and there's getting to be more uh, studying and finding out how many of what there is around. Uh, 
just to give you an idea, five years ago in one of the articles I read, again, to prepare for this talk, uh, the gentleman who wrote the article said that he had never seen a green or a white pie crust edge peacock bowl, even though he knew there must be one or two around. Well, in five years' time, we found a fair amount of green pie crust edge. Uh, we found a few white pie crust edge. Uh, so therefore, what it takes is interest uh, as collectors to delve in and try and find out, you know, how many various color shapes this type of thing are in existence. That gives everybody a better, uh, better idea of, of what we're talking about when we say scarce, rare, uh, you know, super rare, whatever. Uh, before, I think probably the way it was done is uh, I know Joe Blow and he's got one of those, so it must not be real scarce. Well, uh, a lot of these pieces that, especially that Don owns, there's one or two known, so it is very scarce or rare. Yes, Don? You can be very fortunate to be sitting on three green ones. Uh, I don't know whether you know, but last month, Gary uh, Cooper, <coughs> one of his auctions, sold green ones for 23 and a half. Hmm. If anybody's interested after the meeting, come up. <laughs> well, there again, it, it just goes to show you, I, I spend a, a lot of my collecting time on peacocks, and I try and keep up with what things are going for, and that surprises the heck out of me. Uh, not too long ago, you were looking at $12.50, $13, $14, $1,500 for a specific green pie crest edge peacock, and they've gone past that considerably. So, uh, like I say, it really helps the more interest in any particular pattern, whether it's peacocks or whether it's uh, daisy and plume or whatever, uh, the more people interested that start doing research, start looking around, asking questions and all, that's how we all benefit. And luckily, uh, there are enough people that are very knowledgeable in Carnival that have, have been collecting peacocks for quite some time from the uh, looks of their collection that are, are bringing a lot of this information to light. And uh, I think in the long run, that's gonna help all of us. We still may not be able to afford any of them, but at least we'll know. And that's the, that's the name of the game, of the game is collectors. Is there any other questions or input that you would like to come up with? This, yeah. if you haven't heard it, it sounds like everybody has. <laughs> My wife and I, not too long ago, it's been like year, decided we were going to get a freezer. And at that exact same time, at one of the club meetings, I happened to, uh, to be listening to a story about some, uh, I don't remember if it was a washing machine or a dryer or what it was. Washer and dryer. Washer and dryer. Whoa. Wait a minute. Is your dad washer and dryer? Right, said. But at any rate, uh, uh, I was told there was some carnival glass involved and they kind of a trade and everybody was happy and all. And I thought to myself, gee, that's kind of neat. You know, I go out and spend four or five, six hundred dollars for a freezer. So at any rate, uh, to make a long story short, we traded uh, several pieces of carnival glass for our freezer. We are real happy with it, and I hope the folks that we traded with are happy. Uh, unfortunately, one of the pieces I traded was a pastel marigold peacock plate, and I want it back. <laughs> but at any rate, that's called creative financing. <coughs> so, at any rate, are there any other questions, or anybody have anything they'd like to uh, Show us the Pastel Marigold Master's Oh, yes, okay. This is an extremely pretty piece. And unfortunately, it also belongs to Don Moore, but I'm hoping I can mix mine up with his and I'll end up going home with this. This is a very light Pastel Marigold, but the iridescence is super. Can everybody see that iridescence? That is one of the prettiest ones I've seen. I think we own two of them, and, and neither one of them come close to this. So Maybe he'd trade you back for the one with the upside-down That's true, down the one with the upside-down peacock, Don. Would you be willing to trade back? But at any rate, Don thought this was pretty, and, I, and so do I, and I wanted to display this one because it is so much prettier than the one we have. So even though, you know, even though Don kind of got me on the upside down peacock, I'm sure after we trade for this, we should be pretty even. <laughs> well, 
Okay, well, if nobody's got anything else to add, I'm running kind of short here because I don't have. As a matter of interest, well, I might throw in the theory that it seems as though most of the pastel peacocks, particularly your ice blue and your ice green, were export items. Mm. So many of them have turned up in Australia and England. And that is also true of your Northwood Good Luck ice green and ice blue pieces. Mm -hmm. So it appears that maybe those colors were made as, uh, as actual items. They've long since found out how stupid we were, so they're coming back into the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite quite probably that's that's one of the reasons why they are difficult to come by here. Then uh, what really scares me now is what happens if five thousand of them come over on one boat. You know, <laughs> and the price goes up. Well, I just have to have two round trip tickets to Australia. <laughs> yes? Rob, have you ever heard of a sapphire or a teal blue peacock boat? Yes, I have heard of them. Uh, I've not seen them. Uh, hopefully, maybe somebody here has. Well, I have seen them, what they're, they call miniature blue, and I've never seen a real teal or sapphire. I don't think so. There's so many good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Very often. Yeah, I was would talking think. with uh, Maureen Duran yesterday morning. She says that she has a Persian blue peacock bowl. Now, she had a little difficulty. She said in arriving at what color it was, and Tom Sink, I guess his name is, the auctioneer who was going to sell her glass next Jim year at the uh, hmm? Jim. Jim seat, yeah, at the Heart of America auctions. I told her that it was, it was uh, definitely <laughs> uh, sapphire, uh, not sapphire, uh, Persian blue. <coughs> I'd have to see it. I, I, I don't know. It's a little hard to uh, fathom, but she, she claims it is. And strangely enough, you know, a few years ago, Lynn Lewis walked in the Northwest Convention with a uh, with a uh, um, Rocio bowl in Persian blue. Mm -hmm. So a true Persian blue, no question in the world about it. So anything is possible. But the fact Noreen had some doubts as to the color made me wonder if it was true, uh, yeah. a true, true. We can all go to her auction, find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, at any rate, I think probably there are a number of off blue and off green uh, pieces that were made that. Of course, we all like to call, uh, you know, Persian whatever or Renanger or whatever, whatever number or whatever name makes it go up higher. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I would love to see those if they are, in fact, uh, true, you know, uh, to the color that they are telling. Uh, but like I say, I've not seen them. And of course, I do not travel as much as a lot of the other members here uh, to get out to see these things. Uh, but if anybody does happen to hear of a pie crust edge or an eight ruffled or even a plate in any of these colors that were, are not known, uh, I'd appreciate knowing about it just for my own information. Yes. Well, I have a question. You, uh, when you were talking about peacock and urn ice cream bowls and masters, uh, did you say that, that all the colors come stippled and unstippled? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah, I, I guess I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't remember seeing any of the pastel, ice, the pastel green and pastel blues that are fully stippled. I, I, ice cream. I myself have not seen them. Uh, I'm going from information that has been passed on to me. Apparently, somebody has seen them, and of course, we run into this. I don't know situation you know where somebody thinks they may have seen something or whatever else and passes the word along and we all think wow there's a, you know so i can't say for sure the only thing i do know for sure on the marigold blue purple uh all the basic dark colors i have seen still as far as the pastels, the white ice, green ice, blue, uh, any of those goodies, I have not seen. I have not ever been offered one to buy uh, this type of thing. So you kind of have to, you know, keep your eye open. If you find one, it's a real find, however. I wanted to say that I've 
say that two years ago at Fire in America, Carol Cox did have a sapphire from the Masters ice cream book. Two sapphires. Was it stippled, do you remember? I don't yeah. remember that it was. Yeah. It was it yeah. It was real sore. And it was a, a really almost the color of Celeste blue. Very deep sapphire. And I heard that there's another one. One or two. Uh, one sold uh, a couple months ago. Uh, at the uh, Canadian Convention, Ellen Gregoire from New York sold it to Bruce Hill. They said it was outstanding for $7,500. Mm -hmm. Well, at any rate, when you start talking about those figures, like I say, any of the, any of the off colors, whether they be uh, the darker colors or whether they be uh, ice blue, ice green, ice purple, ice, you know, whatever, Keep your eye open for them because they are certainly worth worth owning as long as they're within a price you know you feel comfortable with. Uh, any of the greens that I have seen recently are going uh, for a pile of money. There again, I've seen very, very, very few of them. Period. Uh, but I would imagine a really nice dark green is going to cost you I don't know what five. A lot. A lot. So therefore, any of you that are fortunate enough to own any of these off colors or the greens or whatever, uh, who knows where they're going to end up? Because every time I see one that's sold, the price is higher than I ever thought you know they would ever go for. So, at any rate, any of you just go ahead and start a line over here for those of you that want to buy a green bowl. $22.95. I'm not going to bag you the whole $2,300. Anybody else have anything they would like to add? Good talk, Bob. Thank you. Like I said.